So, um, I'm not sure how much of the end of the last stream you saw, because I think you fell asleep towards the end, but, um, we beat up Nikolai, and we can now fly on our ship. So that's cool. Um, a few other things I did, I actually need to fix this, because I actually want you as Black Mage. And I think I'm... Yeah, okay. Job command, white mage. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna switch group cast master with... Spellcraft. So, you is now a level 10... Uh, you is now a level 10 wizard, which gives us access to ventriloquism. And I can't wait to show you what ventriloquism does, because that's fun. Uh, who else maxed out? Uh... Idea did not max out on anything. We got to level 10 chariots here with Magnolia, and you is a level 10 astrologian. Whoops. If you go to our equipment, Magnolia is a fucking beast. Also, I went out and spent all my money on costumes. Magnolia looks amazing in this outfit. But, uh, she's just a walking tank. Well, not tank. She's a glass cannon, but, you know. 165 damage with all of her weapons. We've also got Edea and Tiz in their default outfits from Bravely Default. And we've got the Dimensional Garb for you. Uh, if we go to our abilities, you is running Ventriloquism and Spellcraft. Magnolia is running Quad Wield, Dual Wield, and Physical Attack 20% up. Um, Idea is running Triple Wield, Dual Wield. Items for All, which is incredible. That's an, that's, this is an amazing ability that I never knew I needed until I had it. And then we have Tiz, who <laughs> is just overpowered beyond all reason. So anyway, we're over here for a specific reason. That's not what I wanted. Because <coughs> we actually need to board the rowboat here. Because you can't land over here, actually. You have to rowboat over here. And the reason we're over here... I'm going to save first. Is there something very specific over here that I want to take care of? There's two things we're going to take care of. Because that, um... That yellow exclamation point over there is, I believe, where we start Chapter 4. There's two things we need to do before that. First, second is going to be that subnet over there, but first, I want to come over here. Ugh, I'm freezing out here. No one's ever going to show up. I hate this job. It'll be great, they said. You'll get plenty of fresh air, they said. And here I am. Freezing my tail feathers off again! Ah, oh, good. I was sick of well... Well met, brave souls! You bear the qualifications! I am the anchorite of light! <coughs> Mouthpiece of Amaterasu! This power can be yours to command! Have you the confidence to withstand the heavenly light? Yes? No? Maybe? What? Really? It's your funeral, I guess. Let's see if that confidence is misplaced. So unlike... <clears throat> so unlike all the other summons, this is a proper boss fight against the Anchorite of Light. So, to start things off, of course you need to default. He's got Comet. And eventually he's going to cast his summon, Amaterasu. Oh, you motherfucker. 
Alright, well, let's just show off how much damage Magnolia does. And you want to show off how much damage Eudea does as well, just with their normal attacks. We're gonna physical boom both of them. God damn it! Look at that! It's almost a thousand damage a hit! I love dual wield and quad wield. It's so good. Oh, jeez. Okay, Astral Magic. Uh, Curata. Shoot, hold up. Oh, I don't have spellcraft. Fuck me. Bravely second. Hey, Tiz, I need you to do me a favor. I'm already wasting a Bravely Second. Two. Does Isuna not cure stop? I'm sorry? What? I'm sorry. Are you kidding me? Oh, here's a Matarasu. Matarasu is a summon that heals, because of course it does. Hey, uh, Idea, do, do, do you know, do you happen to know Remedy works on stop? It doesn't! What the fuck? Oh my god, finally. So, here's what Ventriloquism does. So, I'm gonna cast a Charada Blast on us. I'm also just gonna cast Thundara as is twice, because I don't need it. But because I cast Blast, I'm just gonna go ahead and say Physical Boon. Uh, Mystic Ward, Speed Boon, and... How about an Evade Boon? So those are all targeting you, right? Because of Ventriloquism, they all get turned into Blast Spells. So we can just set up AoE buffs whenever we want with Ventriloquism. And with Limit Breaker, the, the ability Tiz has, I can do that again and double... Oh, whoops. Hmm. I forgot that it would affect my own spellcraft. Or my own spells. Ha! Yeah, I yeah, it doesn't work quite as well because you literally can't do anything if you if I do that. So, you know. So anyway, Tyrant Swar Yeah, that, that was my mistake. I forgot it did that. That is a big oopsie. Yippee! It's my time to shine! Man, I wish I could examine him. Huh? 
guard still did 9,999 damage. Look at that damage output! He's dead! We killed him! <laughs> oh my god. Magnolia is just a beast. Oh, I forgot to turn experience gain back on. It doesn't matter. We didn't get anything for it. But like, seriously, just, which, which of these scenes is my lower screen again? Just, look at that! Like, her physical defense is garbage, but like, I don't know why, I don't know what that is. I don't know why that pops up. You gonna go away? Hello? I don't know why that popped up. But yeah, um... Yu has little to... Well, actually, Yu has a lot of physical defense, because he still has his armor, but... His magic attack is 173. Uh... is not doing too bad, either, on the attack front. And then we've got, uh... His, who I believe I need to check his mind stat, which is only 52. But yeah. Um, the reason I also have you out. No, I have to walk back. The reason I have you out instead of Magnolia is because, um, as it turns out, hey, uh, the airship's really fucking stupid. Because we can enter the airship and get a free heal whenever we want. But we have to be you or Tiz because this is the male's bathhouse. We can't go into the female one with Magnolia or Idea. So you have to be you or Tiz if you want to heal the party this way, and it's dumb. Anyway, that aside. How do I... There we are. Alright, so now we're gonna head over to this sub-event. And... Before you ask, I've already picked out which job I want, but, um... Hey, it's the Grand Ship, just in the middle of this fucking lake. Stranded. Wow! This place is something else. Ships piled upon ships? And the whole of it forming a city? This is Grand Ship, the sinking state. At least that's what people used to call it. An entire nation built atop a sinking boat? Yep, a really big boat. Big enough to be its own nation. It was also our airship for a while. A boat? That was a nation? That was an airship? Je ne comprends pas! Wow, sir. That must have been some adventure. I wonder how our friends at the tavern are doing. We should stop in and say hello. Indeed we should. I remember you. Hey, that's that's and uh I forgot what her name was. Hey! What? What's with the long faces? Taxes. Pfft. What else? They're going up next week for the third time this month. Food, clothes, books, booze. You name it, they're raising the taxes. This country's going to hell in a handbasket if you ask me. What? Wait! I know that face! Well, 
well, look what the waves dragged in. You're looking hale and hearty, my dears. And you, Dats, and Zats haven't changed a bit. Well, blow me down. If it ain't Idia, and tis too. <laughs> you had a good long snooze, didn't you? I can't thank you enough for everything you did for us. <laughs> it was nothing. I still can't get over how nothing's changed. The tavern's just like I remember. <laughs> it may look that way, but a lot's happened here in Grandship since your last visit. Aye, a lot indeed. About a year ago, we ran out of power. There wasn't a spark left. We came down in this crater lake, and we've been bobbing here ever since, like a lonely buoy. We decided to make the best of it. Give up flying around the world, and build a new nation right here. And you've been here ever since? That's right. We've taken in refugees, orphans, anybody who needed a roof over their head. We're starting anew, building from the bottom up. The new Grandship Republic. Has a nice ring to it, huh? Milady, I have returned. I have placed the goods you requested out front. Ah, so you have come too. Alternus? Alternus Dim. Loyal guardian and holder of the Dark Knight Asterisk. This childhood friend of Idia's served her father brave as a key member of Eternia's Council of Six. He travels the world ceaselessly to carry out the tasks assigned to him by Brave, his mentor and surrogate father. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? Thank you. Once again, you deliver the goods. Where would we be without you? Here, let me give you something. How about a draught of ale on the house? Thank you. Perhaps later. A free drink? That man deserves an open tab for life! Sending the Dark Knight of Eternia out on pub errands? <laughs> Only you would have the nerve. <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Ah, but today's a fine day for a feast. What do you say? How about I whip up one of my specialties? Now that's what I'm talking about! Lord of House Genealgia and leader of the Three Cavaliers? At your age? Hmm, that's mighty impressive. It's nothing special, really. Wanna hear something even crazier? This lass says she comes from the moon! The moon! Nice to meet you. Oh, but this is delicious. Mm. Seconds, please? Ah! <laughs> the appetite of the young. Hey, Mr. Alternus! Ah, there you are. Here, come sit with us. And here's some piping hot soup for you. Yippee! <laughs> and this is from me. Wow, sketch pads and pencils! These are great! Thanks so much, Mr. Alternus. You really have a way with kids. I only help to distribute the nation's handouts, uh, food, stationery, and the like. It has made me uh, popular. It is a fine nation, this one. Where else would you see the underprivileged so well taken care of and so happy? Not many places, for sure. Ah, did that ever hit the spot? You can still pack it away, huh, princess? <laughs> Ain't that the truth. Every time we come here, you treat us to a magnificent feast. Wait, you mean you never pay for your meals? Uh, well, no. Though when you put it like that, it kind of makes us sound like we're freeloading. You know, maybe we should pay sometimes. How much do we owe you? Mention it! Seeing your happy faces and full stomachs is all the payment I need. Oh, come on. Let us pay just this once. Really? Well, if you insist. Uh, let me see. Um, plus tax. That comes to... Uh, yeah. 
1,825,890 pig. With a 10% discount for regulars. 1,800,000... And... But how? I told you, didn't I? The taxes here are out of control. Yeah, but even still. I mean, there must be some mistake. The tax laws are set by our wise leaders. I'm sure they know what they're doing. Well, I'm going to lodge a formal complaint. You, you can pick up the tab. Let me know I... And there she goes. I guarantee you, at least three quarters of that is Edea. New Grandship Republic. I need to close that fucking thank you. Alright, let's see if we can figure out who's in charge of these taxes. Oh, hey, the inn is still here. Hold up. Hold the phone. Bitch! Had I known- I forgot there was a shop here, and I would have bought shit here instead. Ah! Damn it. Fuck me. I mean, we don't really need Kiraga at this point. No one ever uses Aroga. I've never seen anyone play this game and use Aroga. Faraga and Blizzaga, though. Hmm. I'll take Fyraga. And I'm broke. Ugh, look, it's a simple question. Who's responsible for these outrageous taxes? Yes, yes. As I have tried to explain, tax policy is determined by consensus of the entire council. The council, in turn, is chosen by the collective will of the nation. So as you see, in a very real sense, everyone is responsible. But who in their right mind would want taxes so high? Idia, there is nothing to be gained by browbeating this gentleman. He is but one of many counselors. But it's ridiculous! Someone has to take responsibility. The waffling is driving me bonkers. This council is just a doddering old bunch of do-nothings. The poor laws here in Grandship are quite comprehensive. A certain degree of taxation is essential to maintain them. A certain degree? I just paid seven figures for one meal! Well, you did. We must look after the orphans and the aged. Or are you suggesting we abandon them? The taxes also pay for the bread and books that I distribute to the children. Okay, so it's for a good cause. But aren't you taking it a bit too far? You are not the first to say so. This is why we are beginning to consider major policy reforms. What? Yes, a new organization has taken up the cause. Citizens concerned for the nation's coffers, they call themselves. They're holding their inaugural meeting in the old engine room. A number of influential council members will be attending. Should their agenda succeed, we can expect great changes, starting with taxes, which they plan to abolish almost entirely. Well, that would certainly be good for business. But... Uh... 
What of the bread and soup I deliver to the children? How will they be fed? I mean, taxes are necessary, but that's a little overboard what's going on currently. Fuck, I keep forgetting to turn my experience back on. Fuck, I'm so over leveled. We're level fucking 50. Bitch, why did I side with Alternus? He's the one raising all the taxes. Also, Amy, I already said I'm fighting Alternus. There's no way I'm not taking that Dark Knight asterisk from him. Like, as much as I hate the other person, I, I, I want my Dark Knight. <laughs> like, this is one of those situations where I'm picking, a, I'm picking the job over the character. Like, Alternus, buddy, I love you, but like... <coughs> Adia needs a new job. Because her playing Catmancer Patissier fucking sucks. Okay, but Amy, you're you're thinking about that in terms of the taxes are paying for the kids that don't have money. But what about the people that do have the money that are paying tens of thousands of more that they need to for food? Kids can still be fed on the kindness of others without having to pay absurd taxes. Can you imagine, like, Amy, imagine buying, like, imagine, okay, what is, like, a, what is a pizza cost like over there in the UK for you? How much would that cost for you to go out and buy? We're getting a lot of money from these chests. Is this where all the tax money is going into these chests? Okay, so imagine that, and then imagine the tax is over... Imagine the tax is four times the amount of the pizza itself. Oh, hey, we've got another we got another guy here. Are you Charybdis? Are you Susano? Oh yeah, the Anchorite of Death, mouthpiece of Charybdis. I didn't know I didn't know this guy was here, but we'll fight him. Whoops. Charybdis. Magic attack and physical attack down. So Cryptus isn't damaged either. It's just debuffs. All right, so we're gonna take care of this guy. Ow. Let's see. Holy weapon. Uh a blast. I'll send it there. Do I have a yeah, physical attack up for all allies, thunder first. And 
It's his. Same thing as before. Physical boon. Speed boon. Uh, Mystic ward. Eh, we'll go with Mystic ward. Yeah, so much for that Charybdis debuff. Let's finish this! Awesome. The Dia goes first. Short physical attack now 155%. This guy's dead. This guy's gonna die. Man, if only you could stop missing. Splendid! Hey, we got Charybdis. Sweet. Alright. Oh my god. But yeah, that items for all ability that uh, Idea has, pretty great. Because all of our items are multi-target. It's pretty, it's pretty great. I love it. But yeah, so this game has that issue where every job asterisk is a moral decision and most of the time it's like I just I just want Dark Knight. I don't care if I don't like the other guy, I just want my Dark Knight. It's like how I fought Holly, even though I like Holly more than Propateur. But man, I, I wanted my white mage. Because let me tell you Fucking uh, Bishop is a shitty healer. Let me tell you, it is not as good as White Mage. Yep, yep. So, what do you think about Gats's story about the gigantic old man? That has to be Professor Norzen, right? Enormous troll like body? Check. Bellowing voice like a cracked bell? Check. And those attendants in the pointed hats? Sounds like students of Alcampus to me. And Dat said he kept shouting, Fools! We must revive Chizorier! Speaking of which, what exactly is that soul stone? The one that brought me back? It was all shiny and shimmery. It was like it was made of some weird metal. I've never seen anything like it. It was only 50-50 that it would work, you know. That's what the professor said. I think Professor Norzen saw it all coming. The destruction of our world. The End Layer. And he's been thinking about what to do about it for all these years. He somehow determined that he needed Anyas, Idia, and you, sir. But I was still asleep then. True, but he looked at your medical charts and knew he had a chance to bring you back. If I could run a large instantaneous burst of energy through him, then perhaps... Well, that's what he said. So how did he figure out that the Soul Stone was here in Grandship? The research team mentioned it in their report, when Grandship first appeared in this world. So the professor came right away with a group of his students in tow. But in the meantime, the Empire launched its attack and brought down Eternian Central Command. That's right. I was stuck on my own, so the professor sent Idia. He entrusted the Soul Stone to us so we could use it to revive you, sir. We'd been trying to find a way, but we never knew there was something like that. Who knows where it came from, but thanks to its powers, here I am. I have to say, this Grandship is a very strange place. According to the proprietress, the nation was born some three or four thousand years ago. Some legends say it was built by pirates. Ah, that would explain why you can see the remains of old sailing ships and galleys here and there. That's not the most interesting thing either. Look, over there! And there! This place is full of the same devices and machines as the one we saw in Sagitta. There's only one other place I know that you can see such things in buildings. The moon! You're saying that Grandship started as an advanced civilization like Sagitta and the moon? Perhaps. Or perhaps Grandship itself was the original civilization. Now that would be weird. Either way, 
It's kind of odd that Dad's gave up so easily once he heard my name. Gave up? Wait, didn't anyone tell you? Tell me what? Zaps was keeping an eye on things from the sidelines. According to him, the professor, moving like Quicksilver, snuck up behind Dats and put him into a sleeper hold. Then he spun him around and performed a textbook avalanche pile driver, full air at the apex and everything. Wow, that old guy just keeps impressing. Maybe it was the rampaging professor who grounded the ship in the first place. He's just that amazing. <laughs> As Dats would say, ain't that the truth. So yeah, I'm, I'm reading through the conversation that we're having on Twitter right now, and the, the I, and it just now came real. I just now realized. Yeah, why would a fire type live in a forest? That seems like a bad idea. So I really don't think Galarian Ponyta is going to be part fire. So it's either fairy or fairy ghost. That's what I'm gonna go with. It would be interesting. Okay, but that's not the point. The point is, if anything attacks it and scares it, it's going to retaliate with fire and burn down the whole forest. I'm not talking about its mane, because very clearly its mane isn't made out of fire this time around. Like, whether or not Ponyta and Rabidash's flames hurt you is based on whether or not it trusts you. It has nothing to do with whether or not they can't light stuff on fire. But yeah. Whatever it is, I'm using it, and no one can stop me. On the other side, if it isn't a fairy type, then hey, I get to use Alcremi too. But at the moment, I already have it. But at the moment, this is, uh... That's the fairy type I'm gonna go with. That little, uh... Dumbass little unicorn. Fucking Rainbow Dash. I'm naming it that, too. If it evolves into, like, if it evolves into a Galarian Rapidash, you can bet your ass I'm naming it Rainbow Dash. It's like how Leah had that Rapidash with Drizzle that we called Drizzle Dash. Who ordered this meeting anyway? And why all the way down here? I hear that some hotshot new counselor has been proposing major tax cuts. A new counselor? But who? <laughs> it was I! Hear ye, hear ye! Counselor Kammer, Minister of Tax, has a new proposal that he would like all of you to hear. Minister Kammer, you have the floor. Fellow Council Members! Thank you for coming today. Elec Quintus Kammer the Eighth, deposed king and holder of the Time Mage Asterisk. Once he sat on the throne of Ansheim, but his evil plots on behalf of the Eternian forces were laid bare by Idia and her allies. He prides himself in his precision and his fame as the Timekeeper King little realizing that the epithet was meant as an insult. By what strange trick of fate do your paths cross anew? As you are all aware, our state has no power. Unable to soar through the skies at will, we resign ourselves to this stationary life. You are also aware that in years past, we harvested the bounty of the oceans and lived in plenty on the riches we found. 
Now our only exports are trinkets and handicrafts hewn from wood that we collect from the forest nearby. Every day our citizens, tools in hand, bow their heads in industrious toil. But the inescapable fact is, our coffers are empty! We can scarce afford even a fifth of our expenditures! Long have we boasted generous poor laws, but if we do not swallow our pride and abolish them, we shall be ruined within the month! As such, I have further refined my tax reduction proposal from last week. Stop pushing! I have enough copies for everyone! <clears throat> I hereby announce that 30 taxes are to be abolished! These include income tax, property tax, food tax, spice tax. Oh! This new policy will immediately increase the gross domestic output of the nation! Stop right there! An objection? Yes, what is it? If those taxes are abolished as you propose, what will happen to our nation's poor laws? Who will look after the children? The poor laws? Well, naturally, all unnecessary expenses will be cut, including handouts to orphans and the like. Unnecessary expenses? Indeed. <clears throat> when the nation's coffers are nearly empty, they are a luxury we can ill afford. Are you aware how much one must pay for a single slice of bread on this ship? Well, I... Uh... 7,000 pig! Think about that! 7,000 pig for something that can be had for a pittance anywhere else in the realm! Cheese! Ah! 8,000 pig! Oh, a can of mackerel? That'll be 9,000, thank you! And a round of ham will cost you a nice round 10,000 pig! What good do those prices do anyone? They're unreasonable, unsustainable! And they're caused by those bloated poor laws that you refuse to give up. Damn the consequences! The poor laws are this nation's greatest pride! You would say that it is wrong to distribute wealth to those who need it most? No, I would not say it is wrong. Oh no, how shall I put it? The poor laws are a poison! Yes, a poison that every day saps the strength of this nation! God, a poison? You go too far! I'll hear no more of this fool talk! You are the fool! Your ideals have blinded you, and you refuse to see the truth. So it falls to me to tear away the blindfold, to lay before you the hard, undeniable facts. You there, explain to the good knight how many days remain before our coffers run dry. Oh, uh, yes, uh, let me see. Um, carry the one and... Uh, well, uh... Oh, too slow! 14 days, 21 hours, and 52 minutes! Ah, uh, uh, yes, that's it. <laughs> <clears throat> to rephrase, in just over two weeks, our nation will be bankrupt! What? What? But is there nothing else we can do? Yes, I suppose there is. For example, we could discover a sunken galleon filled to the gunwales with gold, like last month. Or we could beg our neighbors for money, like the month before that! Yeah. I am an expert in taxes! When it comes to tax theory, I am 1,225 years and three months ahead of all of you combined! Uh, you there! You are Idia Lee, yes? Daughter of the Grand Marshal of Eternia? The Grand Marshal would raise no fool. Surely you see the logic of my position? Well, kind of, but... Tell him, Idia! 
He would forsake our pride, our honor, our very future just to fill the coffers. And for what? I will not live in a country where the rich grow fat while children starve. Yes, we can give orphans bread and soup, supply them with pencils, send them to school. But what good does it do if the country they call home collapses under the weight of excess taxation? Why, even as I speak, our national debt has increased by another 3.141592%! Time! Yes, time is of the essence, my friends! We must make a choice, and quickly! <laughs> she is the daughter of the Grand Marshal of Eternia? Surely she can help us! She can show us a way out of our predicament! Uh, speak, girl. You have the floor. M me Okay. <sighs> right. Sorry, Alternus. <clears throat> but, uh... You... You have to reduce taxes. Even if it means abolishing the poor laws. Ilya! Not you too? Has this man poisoned your mind? No, I'm thinking clearly, Alternus. Your poor laws are wonderful. I truly believe that. And I understand why you want to protect them. But they have to be sustainable. Someone has to pay for them. If the country collapses, no one will be protected. What use will your poor laws be then? You sorely disappoint me, Idia. You would so callously abandon those in need? It's not like that! Oh, but it is! If you are prepared to embrace this scoundrel and his inhumane policies, you leave me no choice. I warn you, Idia. Is this your final decision? Buddy. Why would you use minus strike with one with no HP missing? But yes, like the Dark Knight, Alternus will sacrifice a portion of his health anytime he uses Dark Bane or Black Bane. Just not as big of a chunk as it would normally be. So I'm gonna draw a blast. What do I want to do here? Uh, no, I'll just go all out on him. Actually, I have a better idea. I'm going to Warhead Thunderhead. Idea. I need you to Thunder Tart. Oh yeah, these also work on all foes too, by the way. Physical Boon, Mystic Boon, Physical Ward, and Evade Boon. Alternate speed to lightning. Put your head. Are you ready to watch? Are you ready to watch this guy just fall to pieces? Alright, so I'm gonna go ahead. You know what? I'm gonna withering wave first. Is 
is I want to make sure this goes off first. See I want to get the crash. most damage possible out of this. Physical attack up for us, 130%. Physical defense down, 75%. Alright, so you... I'm gonna go ahead and... Thundara Hammer. Thundara Hammer. This is going to be brutal. So, let's let's watch this go down. All right, she doesn't have lightning. That's fine. This is so brutal. My dreams is no more. <laughs> oh my god, it's so brutal. Such a good combination of abilities. He went from near full health to all of them gone. And of course... By the way, you and Magnolia's Dark Knight outfits are ex are new, actually. Or are they? I think he only uses different. I think Magnolia's is the same one Agnes had. Not that it matters, because we have costumes. Ugh! Curse you! Wait! The Altered is! Wonderful! Your father would be proud of you. Now, it's time to put this nation back on its feet! I am already working on a major public works project to repair the engines. Yes, Grand Ship will fly once more! Don't be ridiculous! You're just as bad as Alternus! You're already talking about building projects? About making Grand Ship fly again? It's too early for that. Your first job is the economy. There's no need to go from one extreme to the other. The middle ground is nice. Try it. You'll need to learn to compromise. To work together, like adults. Yes, ma'am. The taxes on foodstuffs were cut to almost nothing. I can't tell you how much easier things are now. Yeah, since the tax reform, business has been booming all over Grand Ship. Oh, I'm starving. Me too. It's too bad about the poor laws, though. The orphans have had a rough time of it. And what about Alternus? He hasn't been around much. Not since the engine room meeting. He's been running all over the place trying to help the orphans. I guess it's not easy to keep the coffers full and look after the poor at the same time. Perhaps... and perhaps not? Huh? All right, everyone! Time for the Eat Your Fill Buffet! Eat Your Fill? Yeah, with the tax cuts, the merchants are finally turning a profit again. And they've been donating their extra profits to help feed the children. Aw, ain't that sweet? Wow, that's really generous. Beg your pardon? I heard there were some children here looking for work. You bet there are, right behind you. Oh, don't you two look keen. If you apprentice with me, I'll pay for your schooling. What do you say? You got it, mister. We'll work hard and study hard, too. With the nation's economy improving, people are taking up the slack to look after the kids. Grand Ship should be proud of itself. I think so, too. It was all thanks to you, Idia. Oh, I didn't really do anything. I just said what was on my mind. Idia, my dear. The food won't last forever, you know. 
Aren't you going to dig in? <laughs> you don't have to ask twice. <laughs> I feel like I made the right decision. Alright, Idea, I'm sorry, but we're gonna have to say goodbye to Catman, sir. Alright, so that's Idea's from the first game. That's Tiz... Yeah, that is Tiz's from the first game, I'm pretty sure. Because I don't think Alternus had that spike in the middle. That's you. And I think Magnolia's is actually Agnes's from the first game. But either way... They have to change our equipment. Optimize. Wow, that sucks. Why did you equip that? Oh, I guess it is stronger, but it's not as... All right, let's go buy a weapon. How much money do I have? I have enough for a weapon. <coughs> okay, so... Idea. There we go. Now she's looking good. And, uh, Oh, right, I actually have to leave. I forgot this isn't my ship. <gasps> oh, the ponytas! Oh, that was adorable. I'm not sure if you're still watching the stream, but that was adorable what I just saw. Alright, so a few things I need to do. First off. Because I want to get this Dark Knight up a few levels before we do anything. And uh, for that, I'm going to show you my prime grinding spot. So on this island, it spawns uh, Kobold. Nope, not hammer. Just this. Oops. There's only an idea to just attack him like normal. And Tiz will call. Actually, no. Set up the booms, and then... That'll kill them off. And we'll do two more fights. Now, Magnolia and Edea still have yet to go. Well, there goes the so that's fine. But yeah, Magnolia can just rinse through these guys, all on her own. Unfortunately, I didn't go as well, and we're out of BP, so we'll call it quits, and that's 541 JP. That's enough for level 4. Unfortunately, you got the shit kicked out of him. So, uh... Uh, hold on, let me check what my, uh... Okay. 
So sometimes that works and sometimes it doesn't. It depends on whether or not things go well. But yeah, these enemies are insanely tough. Like, they will kick your shit in if you're not down. But if you get turns like this, where she just takes them all out in one turn, you just get two more turns. Dude, they stole the key from the Dia. Ah, you know what? I'll take the risk. Well, that sucks. Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and just run. Uh, I nodded off for a moment there. So that didn't go as well as I was hoping it would, but whatever. You get the idea. So anyway, uh, now that that's done, we're gonna enter the ship and heal, and then we're gonna start chapter four. But yes, the uh, Pokemon livestream has now ended. I'm going to assume that they'll probably upload a video later, because that was a hundred percent the sound of a Rapidash at the end that they played. So. We at least know that an, a Galarian Rapidash exists. Uh, what button do I push? There we are. Alright, with everything said and done, it's time to chase after the Kaiser Stronghold. The Sky Fortress. The Holy Pillar! And look! The Sky Hold's closing in on it! Come on, everyone! We need to hurry! Wait a minute, you! If we board the Sky Hold, and it goes inside the Holy Pillar, there'll be no going back. Literally. Right! I know. Are we truly ready for this? Is there nothing we've left undone? We need to be certain. Tis, Idia, what are you trying to say? When you think about where we're trying to go, it's only natural. This really is the point of no return. I see. What do you think, you? Are we truly ready? As ready as we'll ever be. To the Skyhold! Love, a wish pure and true, to bring happiness to the heart of another. I waited. How long I waited for the day when the two of you would meet again. Whether that day marked the beginning for us or the end, I do not know. But of one thing I am certain, True love for another has the power to make miracles happen. <laughs>